Hello everyone, my name is Robert and I'm a Subaru Ambassador and a number of you were asking about how you could make your rear hitch area look cleaner uh, when you've got the hitch installed and you've got for instance a bike rack or something else attached to it. So what I did was I ordered a spare hitch cover. The part number is 57731XC as in cat 07A and that will be down in the description for the video. We're going to take one of these and we're going to convert it to fit on the vehicle. You can probably get these for anywhere between $15 and $25 from your local Subaru dealership or you can order them online. So here you have the hitch cover. And one of the things that you might notice if you look really closely is right there where it says 515 is a template to cut if you wanted to be able to put this on with uh, something attached to your hitch. So for instance, I have a bike rack and I also have a, uh, a um, platform mount. So I'm gonna cut one of these out and show you how to do it. Now, you can cut all the way down to this line here. I'm gonna cut a little bit higher over here because I don't need quite this much clearance um, with my setup, but this would be so that when you, you have to tilt the hitch in and then click it into place, so you have enough room to do that. So you can follow that template if you want. There's a couple of easy, easy things to do and to know when you're doing this. One, use a piece of, uh, of wood. I'm gonna use a, this is a very sturdy cardboard box. I could actually stand on it without crushing it. It's a very thick double wall box for a very heavy jar. Then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to get your biggest metal drill bit or wooden uh, spade bit. So I'm going to use this guy right over here because it's the biggest one I happen to have right now. You're going to get your fastest drill. I'm going to do this all the wrong way so you can see the worst case scenarios. So this is a Ryobi uh, cordless drill which is not as fast as uh, corded ones. We're going to put the drill bit on and set it to its fastest speed. Over here in your corners Stick your drill bit and the key is going to be to, to take the center piece of your drill bit here and make sure it's the same height. I'm going to actually mark it. We're going to use one ruler and one indelible marker. I'm going to draw my line across. Then I'm going to come in from side lines to the center of my bit. There's going to be one there. And right there. So these two points are going to be where I drill my holes. You're going to see the purpose of the holes uh, a little bit later. I'm going to drill right on each of those. The most difficult thing about getting these to look finished is where the lines on this rectangle meet. And this is what this is for here. So I'm going to push a little bit to dimple the plastic, and then I'm going to start drilling. Now with a bit this big, what's going to end up happening is it's going to pull the plastic up. So I'm going to put it in reverse, and then I'm going to put it back in forward. And drill straight down, and there I have a nice hole. But we're going to do the same thing on this side. Set it, drill until it does that, reverse it back out, hold it down, and keep hitting reverse for a bit. Once I've done that, we're going to put it back into place and go forward. If it slips, make sure you put it back in the right place. Once you're done, Make sure that it aligns properly with your template here. And if not, then it's really easy. You take a marker, 
and you're going to draw right along the edges of the holes that you just drilled. As I said, I want it to come a little bit higher than this line here because I don't quite need all of that space. This one right here, we want to take in just a teeny bit. Now comes the fun part. Use a high speed rotary cutting tool. I do not recommend the uh, battery operated ones because you're going to kill the battery pretty quickly. But if that's what you're using, that's fine. Turn it on high. You're going to be cutting from the back. <clears throat> and the key thing to do is to determine where you're cutting along the line. So a lot of people, they get kind of crooked lines because and they're kind of trying to cut down the middle and they're going back and forth. The line has a thickness to it. So for instance, in this case, I'm cutting outside of the line, not down the middle and not to the right side. And I'm going to consistently stay or try to stay on the outside of this line here so that my line uh, ends up being straight. Uh, the difficult part about doing this is you don't want to be cutting through your two by four or your cardboard that you had underneath of it to drill your holes. So move it over so that you're not doing that. And then we're going to start cutting right along here. So let me see if I can get this into a bit of a better position so you can see it through my hand. We're going to start right here at the edge of this hole. There's one side. Now, that might all look really nasty and everything, but the fact of the matter is when that's done, you're going to see it actually comes out really nice because everything that uh, all the plastic that melted up uh, during cutting just falls right off of it and actually leaves a very nice smooth edge because what you're doing is you're cutting and melting at the same time. So it works out pretty nicely. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And again, you start with a hole and you align this blade here the edge of your hole right there so that you don't get any gaps or any bumpy parts. Maybe I can turn this this way so you can see it, which means I'm either going to mess this up because I'm kind of cutting away from me or I'm not. So cross your fingers, let's see what happens. That's two sides. Now we only have this one last part over here. 
And as I said, I'm not cutting it to the template line. I'm cutting it about a quarter of an inch higher. And there you have it. Now, we're going to go in here and we're going to break off all of this uh, melted plastic. And as uh, I was saying, it comes off pretty easily. Which is going to leave you a very nice finished look. Now, as you all might have figured out, the reason why we drill these corner holes first is so that you have a nice curve and you don't have sharp edges and you don't overcut when you're trying to cut through this. So, and as you can see, that makes a nice uh, cleaner edge there. We still have a lot of cleaning up to do on this side right here. After this, I would take a very simple uh, grinding bit and just touch this up a little bit. And this is going to look phenomenal. And for instance, we'll touch up this little section right here. And we'll touch up this. This is the toughest part when you're in the back and you're trying to uh, cut through and keep everything aligned. So, I'm going to go get the bit to touch it up. So we're going to use the sanding bit right here, and again, highest speed possible. And you have to be very careful that it doesn't eat into the plastic. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to continue to clean this up a little bit over here. Get my drill bit out of the way. You can see the back side here, I haven't really cleaned up much at all. And we're going to fix that. <coughs> back side not, might not seem that important, but the difference that you're going to note is this. Watch, we've mostly cleaned up this side over here. We haven't really cleaned up that side over there. So, and you can see all, all the jagged stuff coming out over here. It doesn't show up too much, but very easy to clean off, so you could literally just pick it right off. And now we do our final cleanup, which we're going to do for them from the front because that's the visual side that we want to be able to see. We have to cut from the back because that's where the template is and the lines. We don't want to put indelible marker on the front side because uh, it's going to take forever to come off. This takes a very light touch to do properly. Anything more than that, and you're just going to be digging into your plastic. Because uh, this will dig in quite nicely there. And you obviously don't want to do that. So again, very gentle. <laughs> don't let it skip like that, because you're getting your little marks like that. It into the corners, finish rounding off these corners that you drilled into. Again, don't push too hard. I'm feathering the bottom edge over here back some, an angle like that, because it's the edge that's going to be most viewable if you don't have anything in the hitch, in the hitch receiver.
clean up a little bit of uh, what's left over. Another thing that works really well to clean this up is uh, a sharp knife, and for that, I'm going to use the wrong tool again. But what you should be using is a razor knife, or a drywall knife, or something of that nature. I'm going to use this neat little super multi knife tool. Let me just do a quick slide down here. That's it. There's my nice clean hitch cover with nice rounded holes. Now, those of you who saw the very early promotional videos for the Subaru Ascent saw that there was one that had a big cutout that went all the way up to here. Not a very good idea uh, because two of your tabs are there. You can do that if you want, but this uh, it shouldn't blow off or anything. But I prefer using all four tabs to lock it in across the top. So I'm not cutting these off and leaving it like this actually hides a lot more of the interior. So now we're going to show this to you in place. So here's my rear hitch area. This is going to probably be the first, last, and only time you're going to see the cover on because I kind of like the aggressive look. So it's either going to be the regular cover without the hole and nothing in the hitch receiver, or it's going to be open and exposed like this. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong about making uh, it look cleaner, though. So the key thing about this is the hitch cover gets tilted towards you on the bottom when you stick these four tabs up in the top. So once those four tabs are in, then you push forward and lock it into place. I'm not going to do the quarter turn uh, clips because I am taking this off in a few minutes. But as you can see, looks nice, fits nice. I don't need any more cleanup on it. I don't need to put trim around the edges. And uh, this is how it would look if you follow my steps to do it yourself. It looks uh, pretty clean. Now, those of you who are concerned about the top area over here, as opposed to cutting it all the way to the top, just draw yourself a line right across here on the back and do the same thing that I did down here. Drill a hole with a drill bit here and here and then cut across here. This would, of course, uh, make it a little bit more difficult putting um, something into the hitch receiver, but there's still a way of doing that. If you drill the bottom a little bit bigger, go down to the template over there, you actually can, let me pull this off here. One more, which is down there. You actually can Stick your uh, whatever accessory you have through the hole, reach in here and slide in and put a clip in place, and then lock it into place. So, those of you who want to hide this one last little piece, you can do that by just leaving that little this little piece right over here and, and just cut it the same way that you cut the bottom. But so, there you have it, folks. That's how to do a very nice, clean hitch look with a cover and with an accessory sticking out the back, whether it's a tow hook or not. This is what the results look like, and I hope that helps a few of you and gives you all some ideas. The link, or rather the part number for another hitch cover will be down below.